Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just waiting for a couple of more people to enter there. Great. So we've got Whitney Tennant and David here. Um, David Campy has got a superpower. He can think like a kid. So, um, and you'll see in the talk why he does all the things he does. I will leave that to you, uh, David. Whitney, besides being into art, I know uh, she makes a good falafel. So if you're interested and you're in Cape Town, um, <laughs> I'm not going to say much about your talk. I think just take it away, please. Can you guys hear me? There we go. Okay, great. So, um, this is version two of the talk. Version one was last year. Uh, this one has had surprisingly much more present, uh, preparation. Last year was supposed to be a lightning talk and got promoted into a full talk. and was lots of fun and followed up by an open space and you'll hear all about that for now. Um, today we're going to go through some intros to me and Wits and a bit of history of our experiences teaching code, what's happened since last PyCon, um, then paths for your dojo or curricula you can use because that's one of the biggest questions and one of the biggest duplications that we can remove is like not making those again. And then there's this great trans African translation e something. It's either an endeavor or an experiment. And then there's invitations to you guys for stuff to do next. So firstly for intros and history, um, this whole story for me actually starts at PyCon ZA 2012 when I met Sam who managed to convince his dad to bring him to PyCon because no one could teach him anything more about Python. And I think Sam got a sponsored ticket and I recognized my kitty self and I was like, okay, come, let's start a free coding club. Uh, just for context, I think Sam was about eight years old? Uh, 11 at the time. 11. Yeah, good point. So he was 11 and I was like, oh my gosh, shame, you're stuck. Come to my boardroom. Soon it was 15 kids and I had a free coding club and I was furiously Googling for resources and I found this thing called Coda Dojo. And a Coda Dojo is a free coding club for young people aged 7 to 17. At that point, I went 7 to 12 because I thought teenagers were complicated. Um, but we expanded to be a Coda Dojo and we were Dojo 113 and they're now Dojo 2100 has just happened. So there's lots around the world. It's a great community to be part of. And then I decided to give a lightning talk which became a full talk and an open space at PyCon ZA 2018 and I met Whitney. Hello. Um, so when I, I met uh, David, well, incidentally it was last year at PyCon and um, I went to the wrong room and they like kind of closed the doors hard and you couldn't really like escape quite as easily as you can now. Um, and I realized I was in the wrong room pretty much far too late and then there was no video volunteer so I hopped in and did the vo video volunteering and then I was really stuck and so I had to live stream his talk on my phone because I was just curious about it. So I'm like sitting there trying not to be too rude with like one headphone in while <coughs> I was trying to live stream his talk and then thank goodness he did a, an open space so I actually got to meet him the following day and I found out about we had this long conversation about um, what's happening in the tech for good space. There's a lot of people doing amazing things in tech for good. And um, so, yeah, he started talking. We met a whole bunch of people. And we, we met up with even people from Retro Rabbit who um, they sort of decided that it would be a great idea to give some of our dev knowledge to whoever, you know, wanted it. And I thought um, David's project sounded really cool and I love doing community work. So um, I hopped in and went to the Science Center where his first Coded Dojo started and uh, now there's around between, on an average day, like between five and 24 kids that attend this free code club at the Science Center in Cape Town. And yeah, David's made this amazing little video of what, what goes on, so. Yeah, I made it with one of the kids at the end of one of the sessions, but this is a bit of a show and tell. Um, so this will give you an idea of what kids can actually do without us just talking about them constantly. Um, Did you get the sound? YouTube should buffer earlier. We don't have sound, but that's not awful because it's like that standard canned Google stuff. So there's a code.org project where you make a moose dance. Um, the best part about this is that you don't need a computer programmer to help with these projects. This is a slightly more complicated scratch project by a girl called Grace. Um, Grace, uh, you can see these are pages of code that she's scrolling past here. She loves cats and she loves wolves. She's made a project with these two cats. 
uh, and you arrive and says, what's the first part of my name? You type it in. What's the second part of my name? You type it in. Then it asks you for your clan, and then you understand your hit points, and then you start to explore the world by moving off the stages. Um, and she asks if you're a warrior, an elder. She's done the same thing with wolves, you know. You are wolves and you've got like a little place and she's always drawing these pictures of spaces and she drew so, she drew these scenes by hand so it's not just about the coding it's about enjoying and expressing and then you meet another cat and you say do you want to play and then you've got to play dodge the moss ball but as with most code there's generally something that doesn't work when you're trying to demo it um, so now you'll see that uh, Grace quickly does like a live edit while I was recording here adds in uh, something to fix what was going wrong um, adds a block so that the moss ball will hide when you touch it and then that was the end of hide the moss ball. Other people are making websites, you saw one for cats there, there's one for their favorite game. Most it's like, I can make the internet, um, I can grab some site stuff together, we show them the HTML behind it and then it's scraping out pictures of the guns from your favorite game that you're playing at the moment. Um, and showing people how all that works and then getting frustrated and figuring out how to build a home page and do put all those bits together and then show it off to other people and it's a cool place that you can show someone what guns you've collected in Skyrim and be super happy and then include a video from YouTube and look like you made a video. And then there's some Tinker projects in terms of making these little robots which come in Trinket, sorry, Trinket projects. So Trinket's a great interactive editor. I'll show you a bit of that just now. And this yeah, little robot HTML. you're editing with HTML, and it's one of the scratch, uh, one of the coded dojo tutorials on a site I'll show you later. Some more stuff happening. Every kid uh, just, you know, having coding moments. And I made this mostly for the parents. Um, they're generally the only faces you should see. Uh, today's presentation has a few small kids' faces, but as part of Coded Dojo, there is the DAO, uh, and this explains how we do privacy and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so, I'm going to carry on talking now because we were going to try to back and forth on that last part, but Coda Level Up is a not-for-profit, kind of like uh, PSSSA or PSHA that we heard about this morning, which has been incorporated to do stuff so you don't have to. So some of the stuff we do is try to discover what's happening out there, remove duplication. Um, there's a strange thing that you'll hear me say, remove duplication a lot, which sounds like a duplication, but um, I'm trying to figure out what the difference between repetition and duplication is. But we're looking at how do we help with the kids coding stuff? How do we look at talent pool and first time job entrance and then professionals? But today it's all about kids. For the other stuff, you can head on over to codalevelup.org where you'll see the stuff that's hiding behind the cats if you're interested in not kids. But above it, you'll see Coda Dojo is there. Um, so far, our main sponsor is Afrolabs. Um, company I work for who have really got everything going. Investec has sponsored one of our adult sessions and Deloitte is sponsoring a skills map where we're trying to remove duplication by showing people what's out there. Um, did this come twice? Yes, it did. Okay, good. So we don't do that slide again. Otherwise, that would be really weird. And that's my daughter, by the way. It's one of my happiest moments. I've been teaching kids code for seven years since before she was born. And then when she was six, she came to Dojo early, and she was, or five, she came to Dojo early because she was so excited, and now she does stuff. Um, stories since PyCon ZA. Uh, so, um, David pretty much found out about Coder, uh, uh, Coder Dojo, and then reached out to the organization. It's based in Ireland, and uh, we connected with some of the people there, and they decided that what um, David is doing is really amazing, and so they decided to be like a regional partner. So this is a bunch of things about this whole um, avoiding duplication thing and making sure that we partner up with existing organizations, because there's this thing that kind of happens, which is like everybody does their own thing and then thinks that their own thing is the best, and actually if we all just connected all our resources and pulled, pulled them together, it would be for the best, you know, we're all doing tech for good. Um, so part of what, uh, so I joined Coda Level Up, um, volunteering and helping, and part of the, you know, stuff that we were interested in doing was starting um, more dojos. So David started one in Guguletu, uh, I started one in Fishwick, and then Retro Rabbit, some of the people we met at the last PyCon, started uh, two in here in Pretoria and Johannesburg. Um, and then Fishwick, so, this is a bit of an interesting story. It's pretty much um, a parent came to speak to David and just 
sent him a message, and this is kind of how it all started. Um, well, I came to speak to you. I was rushing into my car in the parking lot, and she said, can my kids come? I said, we're in the science center. And she said, oh, that's far. I'm in Fishhook. I'm like, you can become a champion. And I sent her a link. And then the next thing I kind of heard was, was this story. Yeah, uh, Yeah. So you, so you put her in a WhatsApp group, and then we sent her a link, which is like Coder, Coder Dojo has a link, like how to become a champion. And basically, uh, you don't need to be a software developer to, to run these clubs. They give you an enormous amount of resources online. And to be honest, often, you just set the kids in front of some of these resources and you you know you might have to help them like log in or register but they get on with it like it's it's you don't have to be a software developer to teach kids how to code and that's um, a really good message i hope that you guys all get from this talk so this this lady was just a mom and uh, she decided to become a champion and then we found out she went and found some venues and we spoke with the the fishhook library and i mean as a software dev, for me to just answer an email, you know, occasionally about something and help coordinate a tiny bit, it was such a little bit of effort. And uh, I went through to the, for the first uh, three or four sessions just to help out, be a mentor. Um, I reached out on ZA Tech, on Deep South Devs and stuff to try and find some mentors for Fishhook, because uh, I stay in Cape Town, like in the city center. So for me to drive to Fishhook is a bit of a pickle. But there are some other people, um, so we're actively searching for mentors and stuff. And so they came through, and then all of a sudden there were like 25 people in this in this venue. The first time we had it, and including so a 60-year-old or two, and we had to be like, ah, uh, coding's for everyone, but like there's not enough chairs for the kids, so please go read books. Uh, <laughs> So, but yeah, then, so basically we showed her the resources and the resources you're going to learn about in this talk. And uh, yeah, then she was just speaking to other parents and this whole thing just turned into a whole nother thing. And that's, that is how simply it can start. Yeah. Um, yeah. And libraries are super keen to get involved uh, generally. So to find a venue is actually really super easy. Oh, um, and one last thing about Andrea's story. Sorry, just the oh, yeah. Wi-Fi symbol. Um, she actually coordinated with the, the Western Cape government and organized fiber because the Wi-Fi was so bad in the, in, in, the, in the library that parents were having to use their hotspots. Um, and then she sent a message to the government and now she's getting fiber organized for the, for the library. So it's like this amazing win-win. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, we. I mean, in the beginning, there was a great donation from FlickSwitch to put 10,000 rands worth of data down there, and then they were like, well, that's not really working out, so how do we do it? And then it's amazing. The official library has fiber because of Coda Dojo. It's like lots of fun. Um, so what is Coda Dojo? So as Wits has intimated, it's like this space. Um, it's global, which means that you can connect with people in Bolivia or New York City or India to share practices. There are global community calls. It's volunteer-led. It's done by people who don't get paid, which means we can unlock so much more joy in what we're doing and no one feels like it's their job. Um, it's free coding clubs for young people aged 7 to 17. So the kids don't pay. Now in South Africa, we've got certain challenges around resource availability and things. And that's one of the things as level up, we're trying to remove these bottlenecks. So if we need a stipend for a young person who's learning to code to be able to pay for transport to get there, that's level up's job. Keep it free to the kids. If we don't have laptops and people can't get it from their network and there's a corporate that wants to donate, hey, we're an NPC, we can give you a donation certificate, take all those laptops and give them to someone. That's where Level Up is trying to position ourselves to help all of this happen. Set up and run by volunteers. As Wits mentioned, a mom can be a champion, a school teacher can be a champion, a librarian can be a champion. And then it makes a space for wonderful mentors to be able to slot in. And I was speaking to Jeremy earlier, who was saying, you know, he doesn't have the time to do all that coordination, but you know, he'd love to come and help. And that's where I think most of this room codes. And if, especially if you can find someone who doesn't code, who's passionate to take to share the load with you, you'll go further. And you'll remove the duplication of someone worrying about it and you trying to do it. You can actually do it all together. Um, and Coded Dojo in particular focuses on project-based learning, which we'll get into now. It's fun, it's friendly, it's informal. Um, you know, it's not a school setting. Uh, yes. And a typical dojo session looks like this. Uh, so we do a kind of stand-up kind of thing. We get all the kids to stand in a circle. And it's really good because um, the kids get to learn one another's names. And uh, so they say what their name is, how old they are, what did you do last time, what do you want to do. Um, and then after that, they, everyone breaks away and goes into doing their projects. And because the age range is quite a large, from 7 to 17, 
all of the kids actually do pretty much whatever they want. So on a day they'll be like, I want to do scratch or I want to do this or, you know, and they sort of learn about all the different things that are available for them and they'll just pick something and then they'll just get stuck in. Sometimes they'll be like, I don't know what I want to do and you can just suggest stuff based on, you know, the map of knowledge that we're about to share with you. Um, and then at the end of the session, the we do a closing circle, which is just like, <coughs> what did you do? What surprised you? Cool. See you next week. Cool. Um, yeah, you can see the height differential there. It's not a funny <laughs> lens. Uh, it's like five, six, seven, nine, seven, Whitney, um, 13, <laughs> 10. Uncategorizable. Um, <laughs> and interesting things in this picture is these two young girls here just got into the South African Inspiring 50, uh, which is South African ne Netherlands' top inspiring woman for being kids who code at age seven and nine now. Um, so they're like great ambassadors for what we do. And yeah, fun stuff. That's Grace who made the uh, the Cats project. Oh, I don't need that. I need this. And you're carrying on with skills and your oh, awesome okay. artwork. This is Wits's actual authentic drawn with her own <laughs> hand artwork, by the way. We didn't Google that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, um, yeah, there was some very normal looking imagery and I just had to make it a little more weird. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I guess, so this is fairly self-explanatory from the slide, but um, a lot of what the kids learn is also uh, how to help one another. So often if, if they ask us questions, like sometimes I haven't been through all, all the levels of like code level of, of code combat. So I'll be like, hey, you know, Luke, come on, let's go. And he's like, oh, it's like this, it's like this, you know. So they teach one another, which is amazing. They learn, uh, yeah, a lot of creative skills, communication, you know, all of, all of this. Yeah, I mean, some adults still remember it, but uh, it, it's quite hard to stand in a circle of 20 people and say your name and your age without hand, hiding behind someone else's leg. And But three sessions and all the kids are doing it. So, I mean, yeah. it's a great skill in and of itself. Yeah, and they get a lot confident about what they're doing, which is cool. Cool. So, I know, uh, I keep reaching for that because I forget about this magical little <laughs> thingy here. Okay, um, so a uh, pedagogical approach is this thing that I only hear really from German, German people, but pedagogy is how you teach. Uh, I can't. Uh, I have tried to teach kids to code. I've desperately like said, okay, here's a whiteboard, close the computers, please, can I teach you to code? It has never worked. I've asked some kids to try to uh, teach other kids to code. It was fun, but it didn't work. What I find does work is helping kids learn to code. So you connect them with a code face and then you say, go. And I've developed this model called the loop of joy uh, which applies to adults and kids alike. You start with an idea, you struggle, and then it works. So in the middle of this, this uh, group, uh, this is the Cookie Monster, for those who don't know. He's part of Sesame Street, and he's targeted at younger kids, as is Scratch Jr. So Scratch Jr. is um, a graphical-only version of Scratch, which you can get on the desktop, but it's really designed for tablets. The loop of joy also applies if you want to make Mario-like games. Um, there's a thing called Sploder where you do level design and kids will say, oh, I want to code. You'll be like, if I, I'm a real coder. I would make a level designer. This is a level designer. And the best part about this is you can spend 20% of the time making the stage, 80% playing it, but then you realize you put this part too high and that part too low, and you're connecting into this loop of joy. Like, oh, I made something that doesn't work, and then it works. And if I can t show a kid that cycle, <coughs> they can become a computer programmer. Um, by the time you've done um, Scratch Junior and Sploder, you've done two programming languages. So you're not thinking about learning a syntax, you're learning to program. And then, you know, we can jump forward to something more hardcore. Um, aliens are hardcore and so is Unity 3D. Um, this is the actual Unity 3D tutorial that you can do in one afternoon if you're fast or two to three afternoons and learn how to make 3D objects. And as a grown-up, if you haven't done it before, like me, and you do it for the first time, you will just be so happy. Um, and then you get to put extra hats on the dude and do stuff like that, which I didn't do because I'm too much of a grown-up. But as kids, they really love that creative angle. And they've got so much time that by the time you come back, you see amazing things. And because this is a Python conference and because I actually love Python and it's really one of the things I try to get kids to as soon as possible, there's this thing called Code Combat that I will point you to and it is the easiest place to start. I think that's the first thing Wits started showing people how to do was Code Combat. Um, 
sure. in the first dojos. Things. And you write some Python code to get a hero through a dungeon and kill monsters and find the nearest monster and kill the next monster. And that kind of makes this self-organized learning environment path that we have in Cape Town, which, which will take you through. Uh, cool. So generally, uh, we start the kids out with Lightbot, which is that first one on the left, and it's a little robot. You give it. There's a whole bunch of um, controls, and it has to jump, and then, you know, uh, it's just like algorithmic thinking. Um, and then, it it also often depends on the kid's age. Um, so some of these things are more suitable for for younger kids, but uh, so Lightbot is slightly better for younger kids, and so is. Um, Code.org, I'd say, like Dance Party and the Minecraft games. And then as, they, as when the kids are a little bit older, or if they're just more advanced, or if they get further in their however many tutorials they've done, we do Code Combat and uh, Python Turtle. So I think we're going to demo Python Turtle now, uh, soon. If you want to, I'll do it right now. Yeah. Okay. So... So... I think it was the previous one, yeah. Yeah. So this is part of... Um, a just a bit of context. You're looking at totally amazing. It is in fact totally amazing. It's part of a Raspberry Pi project site because Br Raspberry Pi adopted a whole bunch of organizations, uh, including Coda Dojo, and it uses a lovely little thing called Trinket, where you can write code and see what it does on the side. Um, if I run this code, you'll see it just changes the background color, but that's not so exciting. I want something with a loop. So here is a little turtle making a loop, which you can then start to edit and make cool things happen. And this tutorial ends with putting it all together into something beautiful. Yes, I have a question. No, it's 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so basically, instantiate this little turtle object, and then you can give it instructions for, um, you know, move move up or down or left or right and, and, and iterate in these many loops and whatever. And you can control it, and it can create these really beautiful fractal-like or... Um, I don't know what you'd call these. Not quite tessellations, or anyway. Yeah. Uh, these things and kids love it. It's really nice. And or you can draw a house and your dog and all that kind of stuff and really, yeah, power at it for ages and be super happy when you finish. You know. Um, so this ra project dot raspberry pi dot org. Um, there's links in the slide so you can get it. Um, and a lot of these links are on Coda Dojo's uh, resources pages. It's really really good. Um, yeah. So that's and. HTML and CSS, um, there's the raspberrypi.org ones, the tutorials are really good, and then I kind of just generally go free format, because once you show a kid that they can, you know, put an image of their favorite cat picture in, it's it, they love it, and then after that they just want to like, you're like, okay, now forget the cats, whatever, what, what do you like most? And then often they just like, oh, I want to do this, I want to make this website about this and this and this, and you're like, okay, 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 go, go, go forth, you cool. know. So, oh, don't take that from you. So, <laughs> Which mentioned sites, so please yeah. don't make curricula because curricula, curricula, you can go to Coda Dojo projects, there's 200 projects there, it's a bit bewildering, so as a foundation we've actually started to create these paths through it, so how do I do foundation scratch, intermediate scratch, advanced scratch, in foundation Python intermediate, that's all in GDocs at the moment, so ask me if you want it, I can share those paths with you, um, similarly Code Club. Code Club is different. It's designed to be facilitated by someone like a school teacher who knows how to teach but not how to code. So if you know a teacher who wants to do that, Code Club is the thing, and all their curriculum is there, and it's got six week, six module things on it. So six modules, Scratch one, six modules, Scratch two, Python one, Python two, HTML one, HTML two, and then Raspberry Pi has their own digital making curriculum, which is sliced up in design, code, physical, manufacturing, and community. And you've got different levels, creator, builder, developer, maker. Um, many of them cross-reference the same thing. That's, in fact, how I found the Raspberry Pi digital making because Totally Awesome is part of one of the, the Coda Dojo courses and it's also used in here. And, yes, one of our goals is to remove duplication. Um, I was going to do some demos, but let's get through the content and then we can play with demos. Um, our open space is tomorrow at 11. Uh, so just look out for me and stuff. I can also point you to a whole bunch of resources and whatnot. But tomorrow at 11, if you want to like get a more in-depth discussion going or something, yeah. And then also zen.codadojo.com um, fi slash find. You can it's got a map. You just type in whichever city, and you'll find w which dojos are are near you. Um, cool. Um, you also get to buy things to play with, which is one of the best reasons as a grown-up to do mentoring. Uh, these are some of the things that I have in my bag with me at the moment. Two Pi Zeros, 
uh, Circuit Playground Express, an Ozobot, and Crocodile Clips to connect this to that and that, and it's just fun. Um, so if you ever wanted to buy something, I bought this for my daughters, and it's really done a whole bunch of things. So yes, good reason to buy toys, and then you can come and play with them at the session, and the kids will think you're amazing. A last little shout out, uh, because Import Turtle and Turtle.forwards is very English, um, we're trying this thing called the Great, South Af the Great African Translation Experiment or Endeavor. We're announcing to you that we're trying to do Python Turtle. Next week I'll be at Nairobi at ScratchCon where we're going to do Scratch um, into African languages. And the goal is to be able to say import Iskulpadi, iskulpadi.hamba100. And everyone in this room can kind of see how easy that is if Python is, has a batteries included turtle that you could just clone and make into Iskul Party. But how to do the proper internationalization is kind of above my pay grade. So if anybody's played with that stuff before, we'll be making a mess and cleaning it up around Glossa, Zulu, um, Swahili, and other things so that the first experience of coding, you can speak to a computer in your language and then by a year or two, you'll get away from that. But at least in the beginning, it talks your language, which I think will be so amazing. I've tried an experiment with this before, and it had kids giggling um, a lot because it takes another barrier away. Uh, yeah. Um, just on that last thing for the translation is that I think Scratch has the ability to be translated. Yeah, Scratch is already internationalized. We're just going to do strings. So, so that's like low-hanging fruit. Yeah, so if anyone wants to help with... Uh, producing some of the strings um, in African languages. That's one of the things that we would be keen to help implement then. Um, and then what can I do? Uh, yeah, like I was trying to code and my cat was not happy about that. <laughs> so um, you can volunteer at a dojo. Um, back to that slash find, there's the map you can see. Um, so what David was saying earlier about that is basically like this thing about a champion. You might want somebody who's like, interested in organiz uh, like organizing and is good with like checking whether the kids are going to come and speaking with the parents and whatever and you might as a dev want to just like pitch up there and give an hour of your time to to help like further tech education in South Africa or or the world wherever you're from this is global so um so yeah the science center at 3 p.m. on Fridays is in Cape Town I think in Google it too it's Wednesdays at David can you search church center can yeah. you but what time 3 p.m. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then the Fisher ones on a Monday at 3 p.m. or something like that. Um, the details are all on Coda Dojo. And then help with the translation, join the open space to even just come and enter the discussion, come and talk to us, hear our thoughts, what we're doing, you know. Um, donating cash or hardware. Yeah, so companies, so like w w um, at the moment, often we have kids that are using really terrible, janky tablets. And we need to start getting them some computers because not all of this great software runs on tablets. Um, so if you have any hardware donations, it would be much appreciated. And we now have a place to give it properly. It's not so awkward. Yeah. yeah. Um, because also we have like a bunch of Kano's. Kano's are like these little kids focused computers, but we have to put them like with screens and HDMI cables and it's a whole thing, whereas a laptop is actually great. a little bit easier to, to just help, when, especially when you're teaching a, a class with quite a few kids. Um, and then Africa Code Week is coming up. Is now. Is now. It's this week and next week. So, like, you guys are actually at an Africa Code Week event because you're Africans doing code. But um, oh, there's also, uh, well, un except for our internationals. Yeah, and uh, so Africa Code Week partners with Hour of Code. And Hour of Code is pretty much like find a kid, put them in front of a website. You can do this, like, generally, I think maybe potentially the people in this room are also kind of interested because you might know kids or, like, your, your siblings have kids or you have kids or whatever, and you might actually want to introduce them to some of this stuff. So that can be part of your contribution is just do, like, an hour of code yeah. with a kid, and boom, you've done Africa Code Week. And in this two weeks, most doors are more open, um, so try to use that. Uh, SAP has sponsored it, and just a shout out to them, four million people in Africa have been exposed to code through Africa Code Week since 2015 uh, for the first time. So hard, work, hard graft is happening there, and uh, at the bottom there. Yeah, then uh, kids, ha uh, kids Code on ZA Tech, um, and you can ping either David or myself if you can't find it or whatever. Cool, so yeah. moving into Q&A time and demo time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Questions from the floor, and while that's happening, I'll just click, click play on some stuff, and you'll see code happening. Like, is there one more? Um, so there's a bit of code combat happening here. You're trying to run away from that ball of death, and you need to figure out what the right while loop is to not die. Ah, 
Okay, I obviously haven't done it yet. Um, you saw totally, totally amazing. Uh, we just show back on code, code, code combat. So it's yes. actually like a hero, and you have like um, you can equip armor, and you can buy armor with like the gems that you acquire while you're playing the <coughs> game. So it's 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 pretty much like a full RPG, except you actually get to code how the character moves. Um, and as a teacher, you get like a whole back-end dashboard where you can see how your kids are doing and stuff. I'm not going to go in there because I give kids with names away. Yeah. yeah. It's open source on GitHub, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is, and it's paid. So it's got a very interesting model. So the first 20 levels are free. It is open source on GitHub, and you can pay afterwards. If your kids are doing it, reach out to us because we buy licenses um, and we take donations if you want them. But as a teacher, you can get CS2 and Game Dev 1 and Web Dev 1 for a nice low price. So, um, yes. Um, over here. Hi. So I have this question around content. Um, I'm trying to teach, well, I have been teaching high school girls um, coding. And there seems to be a lot of support for kids, um, but it's a lot more difficult, it seems, to find support for high school. You yourself said you <laughs> avoided it specifically because they are problemful. Um, so my first question is, are you aware of um, resources that um, when kids are finished with this, they can move on to that? Um, in terms of content. And then secondly, um, as you mentioned with the languages, one of the problems that we encountered was with Turtle and how they kept on spelling color without the U and my mm -hmm. girls kept on getting errors in their code and not understanding what was going on because the language just wasn't the same English language, never mind native language. Yeah. Um, and I think that content then also translates into the South African context. And I was wondering if you or anyone else um, at the moment is looking at developing more relevant content for South Africans um, or Africans that doesn't speak to things that are imported um, content-wise. Yeah, so I mean, I think the first part is we have high schoolers who come to dojos. The content is definitely not just for the younger kids. I started there in the beginning because I also felt that it was awkward because I knew high schools had programs already and formal in class. I didn't want to be duplicating people's effort. But now with the Western Cape Education Department, we've just been with the teacher demystification, showing them what Code Club is, what Code at Dojo is, how to integrate that into um, the training that they're doing, they've got a four-step plan now to actually get it into the clubs. And there's 80 clubs across the Western Cape in the schools that we haven't actually formally joined with, but we're going to look at how to bridge this curriculum into there because it's very applicable. Um, I hear you on the color thing. Um, I, as a fellow British English speaker, would like to uh, de-Americanize, de at least for the younger kids, because it's, it's just annoying. And you have to tell them, look, the computer spells it differently, and then there's a whole little waste of time. Um, just on the, the high school thing, um, there's a woman called Baratan Mira. She works for, um, she created an organization called Girl Hype. Um, and then, um, so I can chat to her directly, and then please, please find me and ch find me during the open spaces. I'd be happy to um, help and work with you on this um, as a personal project. I teach. I teach uh, a lot of people how to code, not just uh, kids. So um, I'll share the resources that I've had just in, in, in terms of, I've taught two women now who are like 21 and 17, and Sheena is also a great resource. She's taught women how to code, and she works for Amuzi, which is a fantastic organization, and I've been in conversation with her about maybe trying to open source some of the stuff that they work on. So like, like there's, there's, there's a lot we can, discuss and if you want we start a whatsapp group and we'll share whatever resources we can possibly find um with you on that topic yeah um just in case everything was super mystifying never forget that there is the python shell it is amazing for kids because this is quite astounding when you're eight yeah they, they really like when you crash the terminal so you like try to teach them how to like times strings by like an obscene amount and then so that, that works relatively well, and then you do it again, and you can like, oh, I broke my computer, yay! And they run around the room for a while saying they broke their computer, and then you explain to them why they broke their computer, and then they got an error, and then, oh, I, I actually did more than my computer could do, so. Guys, sorry, I'm gonna have to cut you short. Sure. Um, it's a special edition thing we're doing so that people are actually forced to contact you and participate. Well, there is an open <laughs> space which will happen out there tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. If you want to carry on the conversation. If you can't make the open space, just come and find us. We want to talk to you. 
Great, thanks. Big Andrew then.